Good evening, and thank you to the New Jerusalem Singers for that beautiful musical selection. To all Zoom participants, 
please take this opportunity to mute your microphones and block your video unless you are called upon to speak or read. Thank you. May we now call this meeting to order. Welcome to another lecture given by members of the Springfield, Ohio Bible Plex. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school is, was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Springfield branch was established in 1935. Our president here in Springfield is Dr. Rhonda Miller. Our vice president is Dr. Gurley Rainey. And our dean is Dr. Ronald Carr. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many, but we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus, 
and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our father and his son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he is inscrutable and incomprehensible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yahweh is, I'm sorry, Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he is inscrutable and incomprehensible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the pat pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The 10 primary constitutional objectives and aims of the Bible class are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. 
Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon or Satan, and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of a mortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan is speak the truth. We will begin today's class with a prayer by Dr. Diana Carr, followed by scripture reading by Dr. Jacqueline McCain. Our readers for this evening will be Dr. Dottie McNeil and Dr. Jacqueline McCain. Dr. D Dr. Carr. Good evening, can you hear me? Yes. I am so happy and blessed to give an testimony of what Yahshua has shown me since coming into this class. We're blessed that he's allowed us to gather together, whether we can in a class building or on Zoom or on YouTube, to encourage us to understand his purpose, pattern, and plan. As the speakers come forth, use them in righteous wrestle. Yahshua, you the only one. You are our savior. You the only one that can see us through these troubled times. You predicted it would come in Matthew, the 24th chapter. And now, we are so blessed to know that you are leading and guiding us. With these blessings, I ask I will, for all of us, my brethren, in love to keep us in his loving arms. And may the class say, hallelujah. 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 Tonight's scripture lesson will be 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter. I will be reading it from a King James Bible in certain true and correct names. Second Thessalonians chapter one, Paul and Silvanus and Timothy unto the church, unto the assembly of the Thessalonians in Yahweh our Father and the Savior Yahshua the Messiah. Grace unto you and peace from Yahweh our Father and Savior Yahshua the Messiah. We are bound to thank Yahweh always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, 
and the love of every one of you all toward each other abounded so that we ourselves glory in you in the assembly of Yahweh for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of Yahweh, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of Yahweh, for which ye also suffer. Seeing it is a righteous thing with Elohim to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. When Yahshua the Messiah shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh and that obey not the gospel of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of Yahweh and from the glory of his power. When he shall come to be glorified in his sons and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our Elohim would count you worthy of his calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power that the name of our savior, Yahshua the Messiah, may be glorified in you and ye in him, according to the grace of our Elohim and savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Second Thessalonians chapter one, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And thank you, Dr. Diana Carr and Dr. Jacqueline McCain. Before we call on our first speaker, we'd like to remind once again, all our Zoom participants to keep their microphones muted and video blocked. Our speakers will each have 45 minutes and a sign will appear briefly on the screen when there are five minutes remaining of your allotted time. Please acknowledge you have seen the sign. At this time, it is an honor and a pleasure to call on for our first speaker from our Springfield, Ohio class, Dr. Frank Lewis. Dr. Lewis. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm always thankful and glad and happy to uh, be in class and to sit under this great divine vision and revelation. And we always want to emphasize that this is a school and not a church. And it came by way of a divine vision revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Cooper Kinley, in the year 1931. And he said he, had, when he first had the vision, he didn't understand it. And then Yahweh gave him the revelation or the revealed meaning of it. And he had the, and he was asked, "What will you do?" Well, he first didn't know what to do with what he showed him because he, he didn't understand the vision. Mm -hmm. But after he got the revealed understanding, he said that he would, uh, what would you do with what I gave you? He said, teach your people your will, Yahshua. Mm -hmm. So, so um, uh, we're a part of this divine vision revelation. This is the teaching and the judgment of the world given at the end of this age. And um, one of the things we learned in this school was uh, Matthew 24, 14. And it says, and this gospel mm -hmm. of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, then shall the end come. When you therefore see the abomination desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. Now, Matthew 24, 14, it says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. So there's some good news that there's an immortal kingdom coming up. And it's also when he said that uh, there's good news that there, he was going to pour out the Holy Spirit, uh, bringing in 
the present kingdom age. Um, and that's what we are taught in this school that uh, we are taught uh, Isaiah 8 and 20 to the law. And to, well, let's do it this way. Go to the tabernacle pattern, please. And, and when it says in this gospel, the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Well, we learn in 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, it says, moreover, brethren, uh, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. You have salvation. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Joshua died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. So when you look at this tabernacle pattern, which is the most written about thing in the Bible, um, the high priest would go into a gate and he had to kill a sacrifice for the sin of the children of Israel. And that's a death. And then he had to bury uh, the sacrifice in the uh, uh, labor, and that's a burial principle. And then he would enter in through the door uh, into the holy place. So by a death, burial, resurrection, he moved from the court roundabout into the holy place. Um, and so when it says, when you therefore see the abomination spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Well, the only way you can get in there is through death, burial, resurrection, and blood, water, spirit, the witnesses. Uh, uh, and, and, and the gate is 30 feet wide, and the door is three feet wide. So that's a death, burial, resurrection at 33, showing that Yahshua was 33 years old when he... Uh, uh, went through his death, burial, resurrection, and then he ascended. And when he poured out the Holy Spirit, uh, so that ascending is like going into the most holy place. And when he poured out the Holy Spirit um, on the day of Pentecost, that would have been his 34th birthday. So it's showing uh, that's the gospel of Yahshua. And by that being preached, you can be a true recipient of the Holy Spirit. And you'll receive an immortal glorified body at the universal revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. So uh, in Isaiah 20, it says to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there's no light in them. And I think mm -hmm. in the scripture lesson, what did 2 Thessalonians 1 and, uh, and 5 say? Read that. 2 Thessalonians 1 and 5 which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of Yahweh, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of Yahweh, for which ye also suffer. See, now, uh, uh, there's a righteous judgment of Yahweh that you might be counted worthy of the kingdom mm -hmm. of Yahweh, for which also ye suffer. Mm -hmm. And then it says, seeing it's a righteous thing, well, keep reading. Yeah. Seeing it is a righteous thing with Yahweh to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Now, recompense means they, that he's going to reward. Uh, it's a righteous thing to Yahweh to reward tribulation to them that trouble you. That means trouble the people that are preaching the gospel, Yahshua Messiah. They're going to get rewarded for that. And it's not mm -hmm. going to be a good one. And... Uh, might as well read the seventh verse and eighth verse. And eight. to you who are troubled, rest with us. When Yahshua the Messiah shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh and that obey not the gospel of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Now, see, he's going to take flame and vengeance on them that know not Yahweh and obey not the gospel of our Savior, Yahshua Messiah. So that's why it's so important to know what the gospel is. Hmm. And, uh, and, and, and it will change your life. This gospel has the power to change you from being carnally minded to being spiritually minded. And, uh, and it must be preached in his name. Uh, it's in the Bible that remission of sins must be preached in his name. That means you can't use another name showing uh, somebody died that, uh, you know, like if you, before we come into class, they said, Jesus died, buried, and resurrected. 
Well, there's no remission of sins because Jesus is not his name. And remission means forgiveness of sin. Now, it's said that uh, he's going to take flame and vengeance on them that know not Yahweh and obey not the gospel of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Well, that's eternal damnation. Because if you keep reading, mm -hmm. it'll say who shall be punished with everlasting destruction mm -hmm. from the presence from the of Yahweh and from the glory of his power. Mm -hmm. And then it talks about being glorified in his sons. That's what, right. immortal, that's what we're looking forward to is an immortal glorification in the new earth state. Mm -hmm. Now, John 17 and 3, it says, and this is life eternal, that they might know that Yahweh is the only true Elohim and Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. Mm -hmm. Now, before I came into class, uh, you might as well read that. Uh, so eternal life is to know that Yahweh because uh, he's talking to Yahweh there, that he's the only true Elohim and Yahshua Messiah whom thou hast sent. Mm -hmm. Now, before I come into class, uh, the only prayer I ever heard, it was repeated every time I went to the church my parents made me go to, was Matthew 6 and 9, and read all the way to the end of it. Uh, as a matter of fact, we could quote that because because we used to say it so many times as a kid. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our, our debtors or something. <laughs> and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. Yeah, that's and right. lead us not into temptation, but mm -hmm. deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. So thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Now, in the beginning of that, uh, it was our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This is how he told his disciples to pray. pray. Mm -hmm. This is before the cross. And he says, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And before we came in this class, we didn't even know what the name was. And I didn't know what hallowed was. Now, I've been saying that all the time because that's what the church tells me. Uh, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And I didn't know that Yahweh is the holy name of the Heavenly Father. Y'all use the name chart then. So uh, when he said, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Well, that means holy is his name. And that's why it should be respected and used. Is because it's a holy name. It's a heavenly name that he gave himself. You know, uh, Yahweh and his supreme intelligence being the heavenly father and the creator. Don't you think he has enough sense to be able to tell you what his name is and prove it to you? Mm -hmm. Well, and in John 14, 26, it says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name. The Holy Spirit's going to be sent in the name of Yahshua. Mm -hmm. He shall teach you all things and bring all things back to your remembrance whatsoever I said unto you. Well, he could at least tell us what his father's name is. And he said in John 5, 43, I come in my father's name. The father's name is Yahweh and the son's name is Yahshua. So he came in his father's name and you receive me not. They didn't receive him back there and people don't receive him up here. Yes, See, they, they, he was 33 years old. And they, it was, he was the creator. He was the heavenly father in a body. And they nailed him to the cross because they were jealous of the things that he did. And they, and they couldn't, uh, they couldn't uh, get by all the wisdom and intelligence that came out of his mouth. So say, hey, we'll just, you know, plus they were, they were on the, they had the on the job training. Every time around April 14th, they took out a lamb and they killed it without spot, without blemish. And they did that for 1500 years. So when he come by, well, he was the lamb of Yahweh. Uh, and, and, and he was without spot, without blemish. And they said, crucify him. See, uh, and that's what they did. But they don't realize that that's what Yahweh wanted. I mean, that's the purpose of Yahweh. He was, he was, he was dying for the sin of the world. He died for, to, to fulfill Adam's transgression. And then he uh, also died for the sins of the children of Israel under the law and for everyone. Just like it says in the book of Revelation, it talks about write that which was, that that is, and that it is to come. So when Yahshua died, he died for all that, that was before he come. 
is when he was living around there and those that are to come, which is us. You understand? And uh, uh, when he fulfilled, he fulfilled that which was, that that is during that time, and then the ones that were to come. See? Uh, hmm. Okay. Let's get, uh, hmm. okay. Um, well, let's read, uh, hmm. let's read uh, Psalms, I mean, uh, Exodus 19, uh, verse 6. No, let's do it this way. Get uh, Genesis 14 and about 19. 18, I will say. 14, 18. Genesis 14 and 18. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High El. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Aram of the Most High El, possessor of heaven and earth. So he was the king of Salem. Now you had the right chart there before. It was uh, just because uh, what happens is you see up in the white letters in the most holy place, it will say that Melchizedek priesthood, Abrahamic promise, 430 years before the Mosaic law. So when uh, Melchizedek uh, or when a Abram went to Melchizedek, uh, it says that he was King Melchizedek and he was a priest of the Most High. And, uh, well, Melchi means king, and Zedek, I believe, means righteousness. And for him to be a priest of the Most High, and he's the king of Salem, which is king of priests, king of peace. Salem's just like shalom or peace. And so Abraham's there in the Most Holy Place, and then Yahweh gives him a or reveals to him in uh, Genesis, well, Genesis 15, he told Abram, you look up to heaven and uh, you count, see if you can count the stars. If you can count the stars, that's how your seed's going to be. That's, uh, and then, then it said, that's uh, Genesis 15 and 5, and 15 and 6, it said, Abram believed Yahweh and it was accounted him for righteousness. And that's really where you get the righteousness is by believing the true gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. How do I know that? Because in Romans 1 16, it says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah, for it's the power of Yahweh unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, for therein is the righteousness of Yahweh revealed from faith to faith. So you see how the Believing the gospel of Yahshua, that's that's where how you receive the Holy Spirit, which is the righteousness of Yahweh. Um, okay. Um, so uh, in 15:13, he told Abraham, uh, or Abram at that time, his name wasn't changed to Abraham yet. He told him that your seed's gonna go down and be evilly treated. He said, But I'll come down and judge that people and bring you out and bring them out with great substance. So he started out there in the promised land, comes down into Egypt, you know, his seed goes down into Egypt, and then Yahweh brings them back uh, and, and gives them their inheritance. And the one that brought them back, his name was Yahshua, the son of Nun. So there was a man up there in the promised land who was king and priest. And so when Yahweh did go down and deliver the children of Israel and how they were delivered uh, was by a death of a lamb. And they were buried in the cloud and in the sea and they resurrected in the wilderness. That's a death, burial, resurrection. That's what got them out of physical bondage. And what's that representing? Yahshua said in John 5, 39, the scriptures, they search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they that testify of me. So man was in spiritual bondage from the fall of Adam and uh and they're in the bondage of death they you know you can, they, 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 they're Yahshua Messiah is the resurrection and the life so there man was in bondage uh to death and sin until the Messiah came and 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 died for the sin of the world and that's John 1 29 behold the lamb of Yahweh which taketh away the sin of the world so how they were delivered out of physical bondage was by a death of a lamb. They were buried in a cloud in the sea and they resurrected in the wilderness. Also, the blood was put on the four points of the door. 
They went through the divided waters of the Red Sea and it was an angel in the cloud leading them, spirit. So they were delivered by blood, water, spirit, or, or by the death, burial, resurrection. Well, that's how you're delivered from spiritual bondage and darkness and ignorance and sin is through Yahshua Messiah dying for the sins of the world. And then he's buried. And then when he resurrects, he resurrects without sin, a quickening life-giving spirit. And he tarried for 40 days making spiritual appearance. Oh, and you might as well read that. What was he doing them 40 days? Read Acts 1 and 3. See, uh, you'll get, you'll read in the Bible. You know, before I come into class, I ain't never heard about no tearing for 40 days. You understand? We learn a lot of stuff in this school, you know? And it's beautiful. Still just as good today as it was when we first heard it. Mm -hmm. Acts 1 is and a 3. beautiful thing. Read. Yes, it is. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of Yahweh. Now you see what he was doing? When he mm -hmm. resurrected, he was, uh, it, was, uh, it was after his passion, he, he appeared with, by many infallible proofs. Mm -hmm. And he was telling them, uh, he was speaking of the things and he tarried for 40 days or he was being seen of them 40 days and speaking the things pertaining to the kingdom of Yahweh. Now, see, when he died, he died on the first feast day, which is April 14th, feast of the Passover. First Corinthians 5 and 7 said, Yahshua, our Passover was sacrificed for us. He was buried all that 15th. So the 15th, the feast of unleavened bread, he's the true bread. He hadn't risen yet. He fulfilled the Sabbath, not blinking his eye or, or, you know, he died on a Friday, which is the sixth day of the week. He's buried all that Saturday, so he's fulfilling the Sabbath. No man shall go out of his place on the Sabbath day, testifying to him being dead and buried in the tomb, see? Because uh, when he walked around, he, uh, he did a lot of healings on the Sabbath, and they weren't happy about it. They're saying, he's breaking the Sabbath. Well, they didn't realize the high priest works seven days a week in the tabernacle and in the temple. So he's got to work all seven days a week because he's the real high priest on the airplane fulfilling uh, the physical high priest, see? <clears throat> and then when he dies, buries, resurrects. He, well, even when, they, when he dies, they put on the uh, cross in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, Yahshua of Nazareth, uh, king of the Yehuda. See, uh, showing he, but 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 when he died, buried, and resurrected, and ascended and poured out the bleed, uh, poured out the Holy Spirit, he's the King of Kings. Mm -hmm. Now, and he's the High Priest, the High Priest. And when he got into the hearts and minds of mankind uh, in Revelation, they said he's made us kings and priests on the earth. Uh, it don't look like it physically, does it? <laughs> um, so. Uh, he fulfills the Feast of Unleavened Bread on April the 15th, being in the tomb. April 16th is the Feast of First Fruits, and he's the first one to resurrect from the dead and to never die no more. And he didn't resurrect alone. He resurrected with 4,033 years of souls. That April 16th is a Feast of Harvest. So he's harvesting souls. That's what those physical harvests mm -hmm. are representing, is the resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. See, and 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 uh, it's fulfilling also the first three, you know, the when you go up there to the creation, the first day is the earth was out form and void and darkness upon the face of deep. So with that earth being without form and void, it's in a death like state. The water covered over. That's a burial showing his death burial. The second day he did divide between the waters above waters beneath, but the waters beneath were still covered over the earth. So that's still a burial on the second day. It isn't until the third day that the waters roll back and the seed of vegetation come for, for herb yielding seed after his kind, tree yielding fruit after his kind. What a, why would it talk about herb yielding seed of his kind and tree yielding fruit of his kind? Because they're going to resurrect after his kind. He resurrects the spirit body and he's resurrecting souls on the third day. And those are the first fruits on the third day of creation. And when they resurrect with him and, and, and plants don't have flesh and blood. So it's telling you how Yahshua Messiah resurrected. 
He resurrected a quickening spirit. He didn't resurrect a flesh and blood body. See, you see how these things that we learn in this school, there just ain't nothing no better than what you get down here. This is the best education in the world. It's the truth that Yahweh's given the world at the end of this age. Uh, people can disagree with us, but there is nobody going to disprove what we say. Not according to the Bible or the creation or your human body. You understand? That's how great this teaching is. Okay. Read uh, Psalm, I mean, uh, uh, Exodus 19. Uh, well, mm -hmm. you might as well read 19 and 1. No, I can't do that. Start about 19 and 4. Now, what this is, this is June 3rd. He's telling Moses what to tell the children of Israel. So start about 19 and 4 and then come down. Exodus 19 and 4. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Now, now he says, I bear you on eagles' wings. Why does he talk about an eagle? Well, eagle starts with the first letters of E, and that's the first thing of that title of Yahweh in a spirit embodiment, Elohim. See, an eagle has keen vision. See, Yahweh has to give visions to people. So he brought them out like on eagle's wings and he got two wings of an eagle and it's likened unto how that the law and the prophets and the gospel being preached according to the law and the prophets, that will deliver you just like he delivered the children of Israel out of physical bondage. It's showing how mankind can be delivered out of spiritual bondage by the preaching of the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. That's what delivered us. Because before we kept, before we heard these things, we were, we were all in darkness. We had been deceived. We were in bondage to lies and deception. And it took this, the, the power of this gospel to deliver us out of that situation. Uh, okay, read, uh, uh, keep reading, please. 19.5. If you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Now it says, and you shall be a kingdom of priests to me. Mm -hmm. You understand? A kingdom of, uh, and the priests were the teachers. Mm -hmm. So it's a kingdom of teaching. You understand? Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's what happened on the, well, yeah, uh, I didn't finish that back there. Well, we'll get to it maybe. Okay, uh, we'll see how it goes. Well, so what we're going to try to run a little bit is the kingdom here. Since uh, uh, that was in the scripture lesson, and um, and it's a nice thing to talk about. <laughs> and king comes from, kingdom means king's dominion. And uh, look, if you're in the kingdom, you should know what the king's name is. And we came to the school, and his name is Joshua. And in Acts 4 and 12, it says, neither is there salvation in the other. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's only one name of salvation, and that's Yahshua. Uh, and, and he said in John 14 and 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. He's the only one that come from Yahweh in righteousness. That's the only way to go back is through Yahshua the Messiah. He's the way the truth and the life. No man coming to the Father, but by him. That's John 14 and 6. It also lines up with 1 Timothy 2 and 5. There's one Yahweh. You can do the, look at this by the pattern there. If you look at the tabernacle pattern there, it said there's one Yahweh, and he'd be like the most holy place, and one mediator between mm -hmm. Yahweh and man, the man, Yahshua the Messiah. See, and in John 10 and 9, he said, now, how do you get into the holy place? That, that'd be the mediator between Yahweh and man would be the, mm -hmm. the whole. The only way you can get in there is through the door. And Yahshua said in John 10 and 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find good pasture. And that's why if you've been gone into the holy place, you, when so, you meet somebody that don't know, you're going to come down and try to bring them up into the holy place. And the only way you can do it is by the preaching of the gospel. See, that's how you get in the holy places, through the death of a lamb, 
the burial of the, uh, uh, in the labor there and the resurrection through that door there. And then also by the blood that was put on the four horns of the altar when the high priest killed the sacrifice, the water was for, for, for the uh, bearing of the sacrifice and for the washing of the high priest. The high priest had to wash there before he could enter in. That's blood, water. And then uh, he was anointed with the anointing oil. So that's blood, water, spirit. That, that anointing oil represented the spirit. And that's how we came into the world physically, was by a show of, you know, the water bag breaks, the show of blood, blood, water, and then the spirit that made us animates us and gives us the breath of life. And so that, that's how they were delivered out of Egypt. Somebody said, I don't believe that water is divided like that. Well, the pelvis rolls back and the water bag breaks and the, and, and, and the, and the baby uh, is thrust uh, out of the mother's womb, just like the children of Israel were thrust out of the land of Egypt. See, so they were delivered by blood, water, spirit. And that's what they call a baby being born is a deliverance. Okay. And that's what we're delivered from. We're delivered from the wrath of Yahweh through Yahshua, the Messiah. Matter of fact, you ought to say this, read that. Get Romans five and nine. Okay. Romans yes, five, yeah. Romans five and nine. Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through Him. For see if, how you're saved from the wrath through Yahshua, mm -hmm. and saved by His blood, and you're saved from the wrath. That's what you're saved from, Yahweh's wrath, which is eternal damnation, and. Uh, uh, you might as well read a couple other witnesses there. Get First Thessalonians one and ten, and First Thessalonians five and nine. First Thessalonians one and ten, and to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, even Yahshua, which He delivered us from the wrath to come. See, Yahshua, He delivers you from the wrath that is to come. Uh, and his wrath, that's the lake of fire, eternal damnation. You don't want no parts of that. We've all had some pain in our life, mm -hmm. some things that really hurt us physically. And we were very happy when that stopped. You understand? Well, eternal damnation ain't going to stop. That's eternal torment, pain, and suffering. If there's any way to escape that, uh, it would be worth your while. You understand? And uh, believe it on Yahshua, that's a really good bargain. You got First Thessalonians 5 and 9? First Thessalonians 5 and 9. For Yahweh hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. That's right. <laughs> he, he hasn't appointed you to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Okay, we talked about, okay, get the... Uh, Isaiah 9 and 6 and 7, and then somebody else get the uh, other person get Daniel 244. And when we go to Daniel, you should get the Daniel chart for that. Uh, you, could also, you could also get the dispensation ages uh, for this Isaiah 9 and 6 there. Isaiah, Isaiah 700 years before the Savior comes in, and this is a prophecy he makes. Read. Isaiah 9 and 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Now and see, unto us a child is born. Yahshua came through the loins of the Virgin Mary. So he was born uh, uh, through the loins of the Virgin Mary. But it said a son is a child is born and a son is given. That's the only mm. begotten son given to the world. Like it says in John 3, 16, Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. And you know, most people can quote that one, but then you have the 17 said, but you say, what's 17 said? <laughs> he didn't come in the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Then it says the world's condemned already because it hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of Yahweh. 
He's only got one name. And when we came into class, you might have heard Jesus before. But after Yahshua was proven to you and shown to you, 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 you ain't going, you, you best not be keeping that. You must don't take his name in vain and keep using that. Okay. Uh, a child is born, a son is given. Read on. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, right? Sorry, my, I was on mute. Of the increase, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty El, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That's Yahweh the body. You understand? Read. Mm -hmm. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of Yahweh of hosts will perform this. Now you see where it talks about the throne of David. David means beloved son. And uh, he's a type of the only begotten son, of course. And upon his kingdom to order it. Uh, in other words, uh, Yahshua is the king of the kingdom. And uh, so let's read. Daniel 2.44, and uh, you can get the Daniel chart there. So it's prophesying of a kingdom coming there. See, mm -hmm. read. Daniel 2 and 44. And in the days of these kings shall the Elohim of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Yeah, so you see how Yahweh is going to raise up a kingdom which will never be destroyed? Well, it says, and in the days, it says, in the days of these kings shall Yahweh raise up a kingdom. What are you talking about? Well, in the second chapter, uh, Daniel had a vision. Uh, I mean, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had a vision of a uh, image, and it was dreadful, terrible. Had a, a head of gold, and the arms and chest were silver, the stomach and thighs were brass, and the legs were iron. And the feet were iron mixed with part clay. And he forgot the dream. He knew it troubled him. And he told all the smart boys in uh, Babylon, uh, you need to tell me what my dream is. And if you don't, I'm going to kill you all and make your all's houses a dumb hill. And they said, don't be so hasty, king. <laughs> he said, I knew you would say that. You better tell me what my dream is and give me the interpretation. Well, Daniel... Uh, said, well, King, uh, Yahweh Elohim will give me the interpretation, give me, tell me what your dream is and give me the interpretation thereof. And that's what he did. He said, that head of gold, that's you. And there's going to be a kingdom come and take over you. That's that arms and chest of silver, which was uh, Medes and Persia. And then the stomach and thighs of brass. It's a prophecy telling you about the kingdoms of the world coming down. Mm -hmm. And that's grease, the stomach and thighs of brass, and the legs are iron, uh, and the feet iron mixed with par clay. That's the, you see how Dr. Kinley got it written there, pagan Rome and papal Rome. And, uh, and it was time of Rome when Yahshua the Messiah came in and fulfilled the scriptures. And when he died, buried, resurrected, you understand? And look right over there, right by there. See now. What you got is on the right side, that first plate that we usually have on the elementary chart. The, uh, uh, and it says degeneration in the first Adam. And then when you go to the left side, you see Yahshua Messiah. And right down at the bottom, it says the kingdom of Satan is abolished. The kingdom of Yahweh is restored. Now, see, so what happens is he overthrows uh so it said, in the days of these kings shall Yahweh set up a kingdom. Uh, and that's the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, see, or kingdom of heaven. Uh, and and uh, the kingdom of Yahweh. And through his death, burial, resurrection, he overthrew uh, uh, the devil and his deception in the world by the Holy Spirit. 
the power of the Holy Spirit resurrected. Then he ascended. So you see the regeneration in the second Adam. See, uh, and he ascended and poured out the Holy Spirit, bringing in the age we live in. Okay, now uh, fast forward. Let's go to uh, get the dispensation ages, I guess. And uh, I'll just, or you can do the, well, hmm. You, let's do it this way. Get the elementary chart there. Uh, uh, you got the baptism and ministry plate. What you'll have is Yahshua Messiah coming in a fleshly body. Elementary, please. Uh, and uh, what happened was Yahshua came in the year 4000. He's the son of Yahweh. Uh, Adam, I mean, uh, when he was Yahshua, the son of Nun, he was 30 years old when he went through the Red Sea. That was 400 years uh, 430 years from the Abrahamic promise. So in year 400, Yahshua, the son of Nun, appeared, and in 30 years, he delivered the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. So 430, uh, they're going through the divided waters of the Red Sea. And Yahshua Messiah comes in year 4,000, and he goes to get water baptized at the age of 30 to fulfill that when he went through the Red Sea, it was the 430 year of Abrahamic promise. Now he comes in the 4,030 years, and he's water baptized. And even when the tabernacle was set up, it was set up at Exodus 40, 30. That's when they washed in the labor. So 40, 30 is the same year as Yahshua Messiah is being water baptized. He comes in the year 4,000 and 30 years, up, he's being water baptized. Now, um, John the Baptist in uh, Matthew 3 and 2, he says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what he's preaching, that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hand means close, don't it? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, matter of fact, I'm going to, uh, uh, well, I'm going to go to a funeral for my oldest brother on, uh, on uh, Saturday. And I will guarantee you that Presbyterian preacher is going to say the Lord's Prayer there. <laughs> and he's going to say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. You understand? Now, mm -hmm. now uh, here's the Holy Spirit through John saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. How close is your hand? Would you think that's 2,000 years away? <laughs> no. Uh, and then in 423, it says, then began Yahshua, heal all kind of manner and uh, of diseases and preaching the kingdom of Yahweh. I think it says that. Yeah. Read 423. What does it say? Matthew, Matthew 423. And Yahshua went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people. Now he's preaching the gospel of the kingdom and he's healing people of all manner of diseases. Now that's what happened with Dr. Henry Clifford Kennedy. He was given okay. a vision of revelation. He was preaching the gospel of the kingdom and he was healing people of all manner of diseases. You understand? You see how it's the same Holy Spirit, but it's in our time. You understand? It's just showing you that the Holy Spirit ain't lose no power coming on down through the dispensation and ages there. We didn't know nothing about dispensation and ages either, did we? No. So when it says, uh, give it the dispensation ages, please. And when you and when you read Matt, as we read Matthew six and nine, this is before the cross. And he's tell his disciples ask him, well, tell us how to pray. And then and then uh, uh, Matthew six and nine, he says, uh, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Holy is that name of Yahweh. And they didn't want nobody to use Yahweh back there either. See, uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Why does it say daily bread? Because in the tabernacle, didn't they have daily bread set up there on the table, shoe bread? <laughs> See, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into, 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 into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. See, uh, okay. Um, okay, uh, boy, boy. so when you read um, Matthew 12, 28, now see, why do people say the kingdom hadn't come yet? 
Because Matthew 12, 28, Yahshua Messiah says, if I cast out demons by the spirit of Yahweh, then the kingdom will come unto me. Well, that's why they don't know the kingdom's come yet, because them demons ain't been cast out by the preaching of the gospel of Yahshua. Mm -hmm. See, they're cast out by the preaching of the gospel of Yahshua. How do you know that? Because he said it after his death, burial, resurrection, and right before he ascended in Mark, Mark 16, 15. He said, go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Them that believe and are baptized shall be saved. That means when you believe the gospel of Yahshua Messiah preached in his name, you can be baptized with the Holy Spirit, your soul saved. Them that believe not shall be damned. You don't want to believe the gospel, Yahshua Messiah? Your soul can be damned for that. These signs shall follow them that believe, and my name shall you cast out demons. So the preaching of the gospel of Yahshua Messiah in his name will cast out demons. That's how much power it has. See, and, and, and you shall speak with new tongues. You have, we was never speaking like this before we come into class. Matter of fact, we didn't have no testimony except a bunch of ignorance and stupidity coming out of our mouth. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Some yeah. of the stupid things we've done. You understand that he has mercy and grace upon us. All right. So we're, some of us are a living testimony of that. Okay. Um, hmm. uh, so Matthew 12, 28 says, if I cast out demons by the spirit of Yahweh, then the kingdom will come unto you. Okay, and we went through before in Matthew, uh, well, Matthew uh, 6, well, Matthew 16, read, uh, read about 16 and 28. I, I know time's running on this, so I got to try to move here. You didn't know I was moving that slow, huh? <laughs> Matthew 16 and 28, barely I say unto you. There be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Now, you see, he said there's some standing there that's not going to taste the death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So if you're praying a prayer, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Well, then there should be 2,000-year-old men walking around because the kingdom hadn't come yet. But he said, there's some standing here will not taste the death till they see, see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom, coming in the glory of his kingdom. Okay. Um, get Matthew 25. Well, we've already done 24, 14. Um, and this gospel of the kingdom, that's what the teaching we've got here. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Mm -hmm. See, the end of you will come. <laughs> and when you therefore see the abomination desolation spoke of by Daniel prophet stand in the holy place now how can you see the abomination desolation because the Holy Spirit's showing it to you mm -hmm. you see when uh, Yahshua said he fulfilled all things and they're saying he didn't fulfill that's an abomination and desolation there okay um, hmm. get Matthew 25 31 Matthew 25 31 when the son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations. All and nations. Ever since he poured out the Holy Spirit, he's sitting on the throne after his death, burial, resurrection, ascension. Uh, he's poured out the Holy Spirit. And mm -hmm. uh, he's going to gather all nations. Read. Mm -hmm. And he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on, on the left. Yeah, and you want to be on the right hand. See, the sheep on the right hand, the goats on the left hand. And it's somehow goats, you can say go at. And they do go at all kind of stuff. They go at the Catholics and go at the <laughs> Methodists and go at the Muslim and go at the... Uh, the world go at the drunken parties and dope and all kind of things they're going at. They ain't following Yahshua the Messiah. Okay, now read 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now you see that? that and that's mm -hmm. the first that's the first verse on the 40 play chart is Matthew 25, 34, that the kingdom's been prepared since the foundation of the world. 
Matter of fact, in Revelation, the 12th chapter, when there was war in heaven, Michael's angels fought against the dragon, his angels, and the dragon prevailed, and, and neither was his place found anymore in heaven. He was cast out, never to return. And then in Matthew, well, you see it right up there on the chart there, Hebrews, I mean, uh, Revelation 12 and 10, read that. This is after those demons were cast out of heaven in the angelic realm. This is what the voice was heard. John heard this voice and wrote it down in Revelation 12 and 10. Revelation 12 and 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our Elohim and the power of his Messiah for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our Elohim day and night. So see, them demons was cast out, and the voice says, now is come salvation, and the kingdom of our Loa, and the power mm. of his Messiah. So when he says the kingdom was prepared before the foundation of the world, that's where the angels are, buddy. You know, the <laughs> ones that, did, that didn't lose their first estate. You understand? Mm. Or Dr. Kinley said, buster. <laughs> that's where the angels are, buster. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, and that's what happened on the day of Pentecost there. Well, let's get Luke 17, 20, and 21. Mm -hmm. Other person, get John 18, 35. Did I see the five-minute sign yet? Read. <laughs> Luke 17 and what, 21? Tw 20 and 21, yeah. Dr. Lewis, you have until 8.55. 8.55. Wow. Wow. Okay. Luke 17 and so 20. So much time, it's amazing. <laughs> Praise Joshua. Praise Joshua. We know. Luke 17 and 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of Yahweh should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of Yahweh cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, lo, here, or lo, there. For behold, the kingdom of Yahweh is within you. Okay. Now, see, we were always taught that when you're reading the Bible, you should read, who's he talking to? Mm -hmm. What age and dispensation is this? Okay, so the 20th verse says, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, they're, 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 they're questioning him and they're demanding of Yahshua, which is Yahweh in a body. When shall the kingdom come? And he said, the kingdom don't come by observation. Neither shall I say low here, low there. For the kingdom of Yahweh is within you. Now he's talking to the Pharisees. Is the kingdom within them at that time? No. So, you know, but we will go to that scripture and don't realize, well, who's he talking to? Yeah, and then that's one of the reasons why we have two Bibles. See, uh, but then the holy name, it says when he was asked of the Pharisees. There's a difference between being asked and being demanded, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> so they've got him surrounded. And it said Yahweh's king is in your midst is what the holy name says. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's really what it was. He's the king and they were surrounding him. Hmm. Uh, the kingdom isn't going to come until after he dies, buries, resurrects, his sins, and pours out the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, read that in John 18, 35. John 18 and 35. Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thy own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Yahshua answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If now, so Yahshua, this is before he dies, right before he mm -hmm. dies. He said, my kingdom's not of this world. In other words, my kingdom ain't in this post diluvian age. There's going to be an age change. He's going to change the post diluvian age and then open up the present kingdom age. Mm -hmm. So my kingdom's not of this world. And it's not physical either. Mm -hmm. Read. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. My kingdom's not from hence. It ain't from here. It ain't physical. Read. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Yahshua answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. 
To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Now that's it. And that's why the slogan of schools speak the truth. Mm -hmm. And if you're of the truth, you're going to hear his voice. and You're going to believe what Yash Messiah says because he's the spirit of truth. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yash Messiah died, buried, resurrected. And you read on Acts, the second chapter, that he poured out the Holy, you know, he poured out the Holy Spirit. Okay. Um, hmm. And it said they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Mm -hmm. And then he preached the seven years to Jews and Jews alone. And then he preached to the Gentiles in Acts, the 10th chapter. And they preached the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua according to the law and the prophets in the name of Yahshua. As he spoke those words, the Holy Spirit fell on them that heard the word. When they mm -hmm. preached the gospel of Yahshua and Messiah, the gospel of the kingdom after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that's when people received the Holy Spirit and their souls are being saved. That's how their soul is being saved. Mm -hmm. uh, hmm. Okay, read uh, read uh, Acts twenty three. Start about twenty two. Acts twenty three and twenty two. Mm -hmm. So the chief captain then let the young men depart and charged him. See, thou tell no man that thou hast showed these things to me. And he called unto him two centurions, saying, No, is this, I, I wanted Acts 28, 22. Okay. 28. Uh, did I say the wrong thing? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. Acts 28, 22. But we desire to hear thee what thou thinkest. For as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. And when they have now, so do you them, see that it, they want to hear what Paul's got to say? He said, Everywhere, this thing that you were talking about, it's spoken against everywhere. Isn't what we teach spoken against everywhere? <laughs> it's up to date. We're in the same age. You understand? The Holy Spirit was poured out. He received it by divine vision revelation. No man taught the Apostle Paul. You understand? And the same way with Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley. He didn't have to sit in no seat. He was caught up by Yahweh Ellen himself and saw this thing. Yeah. See? Uh, read on. Uh, and when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of Elohim, persuading them concerning Yahshua, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. And some believe. So you see how he's testifying to the kingdom of Yahweh and he's expounding mm -hmm. to them. Uh, persuading them out of the, uh, persuade them concerning Yahshua, out of the law of Moses, and out of the prophets from morning to evening, he's preaching the gospel. You understand? He's mm -hmm. preaching the kingdom, ain't he? Mm -hmm. Okay, read the last verse, 31. 31, preaching the kingdom of Yahweh and teaching those things which concern Yahshua the Messiah, with all confidence, no man forbading him. So you see him preaching the kingdom of Yahweh? That's, uh, why is that? Get Romans 14, 17. Then get Colossians 1, 12, and 13. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of Yahweh is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy. So it ain't Holy eating Spirit. and drinking the uh, Lord's suppers. It ain't nope. water baptizing. It ain't keeping the Sabbath. It ain't paying tithes and offerings. <laughs> the king of Yahweh is not eating and drinking physically, read, but it's righteousness. It's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Well, wasn't the Holy Spirit poured out? Well, that started okay. the present kingdom age. Mm -hmm. That's the age we live in. You can be translated into the kingdom by the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah. They've, ever since the outpouring, of, see, they couldn't preach the gospel until after Yahshua died, buried, resurrected. How can you preach his death, burial, resurrection if he ain't died, buried, resurrected yet? And it had to be, you know, it had to be understood too. You understand? Because while you know how things happen in your life, and then later on you find out, oh, that's why that happened. You understand? Well, when they were walking around with him, they didn't really understand. But when the Holy Spirit got in there. They now say, oh, that's what he was doing. You understand? Yeah. And then you can have an appreciation, can't you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Get uh, Colossians 1, 12, and 13, please. 
Colossians 1 and 12. <clears throat> Excuse me. Giving thanks unto the Father, which have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the sons in life, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. That's right. He have delivered us from the power of darkness. That's where our minds were before and they were transformed. And Romans 8 and 6 says, be carnally mind is death, but to be spiritually minds, life and peace. When he changes your heart and mind and he translates you into the kingdom of his dear son. And so if he says he translated him into the kingdom, that means it must have come, huh? So to pray thy kingdom come, you're denying that he's translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. See that? okay uh and then you you know then colossians there yes i see it then colossians says uh 126 that even the mystery which has been hid from ages and generations these generations from adam down to joshua it was hid from them and those two ages they didn't have the holy spirit yet but now is made manifest to his sons uh the mystery according to the uh to uh, to the to gentiles whom, yahweh is, would make known unto the Gentiles, which is Yahshua, the Messiah in you. Mm -hmm. And as Dr. Kinley put, the only hope of glory. That's the only way you're going to receive a mortal glorification is Yahshua, the Messiah in you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then it talks about whom we preach and teach Lord. and warn every mm -hmm. man. See? Uh, Teaching uh, man in every wisdom. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, um, okay, where are we? Get 1 Corinthians 15, 50. No, read 1547. First Corinthians 15 and 47. This first man is of the earth earthy. The second man is from Yahweh from heaven. As That's in right. The first man is our earthy. He's, he's physical. That's Adam. Read. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have been born the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. That's right. We've got this physical body, but you're going to have, you can bear the image of the heavenly. That's why it's worth having your mind changed and you keep, and you continue in the gospel. And if you've been, if you've received the Holy Spirit, then you go and help somebody else get it. You understand by preaching the same thing was taught to you, the truth. You understand mm -hmm. about Yahshua the Messiah and what he, what he done for us, what he is doing, and what he's going to do for us. <laughs> Giving us a mortal glorified body and we'll be one of his angels throughout eternity. Is there anything losing that over? Mm -mm. No, there ain't nothing worth losing your soul over. See? Okay, uh, keep reading. My apologies. Um, Romans 8 and 9. Now, I, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. All be changed. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. But that's what people have at funerals. They say, you're going to see them in heaven. Just wait. <laughs> You'll see grandma and mother and papa. You understand? It, <laughs> You know, if they wasn't there and you saw somebody you didn't like, you'd have the same hell you got here. It ain't that way, because uh, Isaiah uh, 65, 17, and it's on the chart there uh, in the next age, the fifth age. Uh, he said, I create new heavens and a new earth, the first heaven first, and, and I create new heavens and new earth. The former shall not be remembered, neither shall it come into mind. So mm -hmm. flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. And then it's talking about immortality there. First Corinthians, you read the 15th. We shall all be changed in a moment, in a read, twinkling read, of an twinkling eye. That's the universal eye. revelation. Read. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, this mortal shall put on immortality. You understand? This corruptible shall put on incorruption. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's uh, 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. Okay, we might we gotta go, or I gotta go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Read uh Hebrews 12 22. See, 12 20, 18 will talk about the children of Israel going to Mount Sinai, that mountain that couldn't be touched. He said, But now read it. 
Hebrews 12, 22. But ye are come unto the Mount Zion and into the city of the living Elohim, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. So you come unto Mount Zion, the city of the living Elohim, to innumerable company mm -hmm. of angels, the heavenly Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. See, the general assembly of the firstborn of the just the spirits of just man made perfect can't do it all and to Yahshua and when Dr. Kimley said to Yahshua he goes woo wee uh -huh. <laughs> and I'll get the last verse 28 yeah. go. 28 wherefore we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace now he says we received a kingdom wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved mm -hmm. see so that means you received it okay so uh, all praise go to Yahweh and to his son, Yahshua. Hallelujah. 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 And thank you, Dr. Frank Lewis. Now it is an honor and a pleasure to call on for our second speaker from our Springfield, Ohio class. We'd like to call on Dr. Lester Embry. Dr. Embry. Who's Gary? My left Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, I uh, enjoyed the words of a previous speaker. He was talking about uh, moving slow. But what was in him was moving at the speed of light. You know, light travels 186,000 miles per second. And, uh, you know, we're compared to that speed, we're slow, we're flesh. But that light is quick. In the, in the natural, is quick. And that's just a type and a shadow of that light quickening us in the spirit, see? So what he, what was in him was truly the speed of light. Uh, it's an honor to address the sons of Elohim and before honor is humility. Um, I had to, come around here and uh, learn these things. See, uh, give me, uh, give me Exodus three and one. I, I wasn't trying to go there, but that's the way Yahweh, he directed, Yahshua was directed him in, in Luke. And beginning at Luke, he is, I mean, at Moses, he expounded under them everything concerning himself. Um, Exodus, Exodus 3 and 1. And one yes. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of Elohim, even to Horeb. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I would now turn aside and see this great sight while the bush is not burnt. Now, now this previous speaker talked about uh, turning your mind. Moses right here turned his mind, read. And when Yahweh saw that he turned aside to see, Elohim called unto him out of the midst of the bush. And he said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. And he said, draw not my hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thy standest is holy ground. All right, thank you, thank you. Now, right here is a show of humility. See, Yahweh, Elohim, will get his respect. 
his sons fear him, for they know the power. See? Now, I got to say this. The last time I was on the floor was Mother's Day. And uh, every time I would say something, Yahweh would show me something. And it filled me up so bad that uh, I couldn't talk. See, Yahweh shows us things. Man, we would have never, never, uh, somebody say uh, uh, the world, even the world say a snowball's chance in hell. We would have, we didn't have a snowball's chance in hell of seeing this until the vision that was given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in 1931. And he went about to expound this vision unto us. And not only did he expound it unto us, but we received it. Through Yahshua the Messiah, we received it. And it, it blows my mind. Listen, I have used dope and I have, I've used all kinds of dope and there is nothing, nothing that I have tried that can get me as lifted as this. The previous speaker talked about when you see the abominations stand in the holy place, we, are in high places that had to be revealed to me. See, the world cannot attain to this, this high places. We could not attain to these high places. See, I'm not talking about physical uh, geographical high places. I'm talking about psychologically and spiritual. We are standing in the holy place. Give me, uh, give me Romans one and sixteen. So what I was, what I'm saying is, I wasn't crying because my mother passed, I was crying because Yahshua has saved us. And it, it tears me up because I was lost. When I, when I think about it, it tears me up. I've been coming around since 1970 and it tears me up. I didn't have to be here. I did not have to be here. I could have been somewhere else doing something else. Which matter of fact, I did. And by the grace, by what we're going to read right here in 116 is, 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 is how I am here today at this hour, at this minute. Read Romans 1 and 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah, for it is the power of Yahweh unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of Yahweh revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Stop right there. It is the power. It is the power to those that believe. If you don't believe it, it doesn't mean a thing. Doesn't mean it's not true, but it hasn't been formed in you. If you don't believe it, it doesn't mean a thing. See, they used to tell me, 
that if 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 somebody put a thousand dollars in my bank account, but I didn't know it, then I couldn't make use of it. I couldn't utilize it. Well, see, it's the same. It's the same with this verse. Read, start that over again, 116. Romans 1 and 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah, for it is the power of Yahweh unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of Yahweh revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now therein is it revealed mm -hmm. to the Jew first, then to the Greek. See, it's revealed from faith to faith. See, from faith to faith. See, faith is the sum and substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. See, the substance is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The substance is the Holy Spirit, see. And when I think on these things, man, I did not have a clue. I was blind. I was in darkness. See, the uh, uh, on this chart, down in the outer court down there is black. It represents darkness. And one of the plagues that Yahweh poured out on Egypt was darkness. It was so dark that you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. See, you could not see. That's blinding dark. No vision. See, but see, the children of Israel, there was light in Goshen. See, there was light. But it was darkness in Egypt, see? And this is the way we all come in in darkness, not knowing anything about our creator. Dr. Kennedy said, it's darker than a thousand midnights. That's, that's mighty dark. That is mighty dark. And see what it takes, it takes a parting of the veil. If you look at the tabernacle, there is the, yeah, right there, right there at the opening going into the holy place. The priest had to part that veil. See, and that veil represents the flesh. See, that veil of that flesh has to be parted. This is why the Red Sea parted and the children of Israel walked through on dry ground. The, it represents a parting of the veil and that parting is only by the mighty hand of Yahweh Elohim. Without that hand, there is no parting of the veil. See, the previous speaker told you that the time is at hand. Well, that hand is Yahweh Elohim's hand. That's the only hand there is. We have hands, but it represents Yahweh Elohim. See, that's the hand that, that has all power, see? Give me uh, uh, Isaiah 43 and 11. Isaiah 43 and 11. I even, I am Yahweh, and beside me there is no Savior. See, besides him, there, there's no Savior. See, he come in the form and the flesh of Yahshua, the Messiah. 
See, Yahweh being pure spirit, taking on shape and form as Yahweh Elohim, manifesting in the flesh as Yahshua the Messiah. They are all one in the same. Yahweh, Yahweh Elohim, and Yahshua the Messiah. Now, he's saying here through Isaiah, uh, uh, read. Start over, for, uh, uh, 11 verse. I even, I am Yahweh, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and I and have saved, and I have shown where there was no strange God among you. Therefore, ye are my witnesses, save Yahweh, that I am Yahweh. Yea. See, see, us sons, we are witnesses that he is Yahweh because Yahweh has taken us through some things individually and collectively. See, we are witnesses, read. I'm sorry. I have declared and have saved and I have shown when there was no strange God among you. Therefore, ye are my witnesses, save Yahweh, that I am Yahweh. Yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. You hear that? There is none. That's that mighty hand I was telling you about. There is none that can deliver out of his hand. Read. I will work, and who shall let it? Now, see, he say he's going to do it. He's going to work. And who's going to turn it back? Who's, who's going to turn it back? Read. Ye, yea, before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. Listen. Work, li I'm sorry. He said before the day was. Give me, give me the... Uh, uh, the ages and dispensations chart. Now, this is what Yahweh said. I didn't say this. We didn't say this. We telling you what Yahweh said. It's in everybody's Bible. He said before the day was what? I am. He I said, am he. <laughs> he said before the day was, I am. Now, you see here. You, you have the, uh, the first age and the second age and the third age. These, these are worlds, see? And in this first age, you've got the angelic creation and you got the physical creation, see? Now, see, these were created in the day of eternity. See, Dr. Kinley was called in the day of of eternity. Now, now Yahweh said, before the day, I am. See, you dealing with a mighty hand. See, and he said that out of his hand, see, he going to run things and nobody is going to stop it. Nobody or no thing. See, that's the day he said, see. Okay, uh, let me have, uh, uh, let me have John 17, start, start at one. No, no, John. not, not, not 17, uh, five. John, the fifth chapter, mm -hmm. and start at one. John five and one. After this, that was a feast of the Jews. And Yahshua went up to Jerusalem. And there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, the Seder, having five porches. That's, that's Bethesda. See? Bethesda. Okay. Yeah, that's that. I love this story. Read. Okay. In these lay a great multitude of important folk. Important, in, impotent, impotent. <laughs> impotent. Right. They, 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 they had nothing. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. In those lay a great multitude of impotent folks, of blind, halt, withered, 
wanting for the move, waiting for the moving of the water. See, they was waiting for the movement of the water that they might be healed. The previous speaker told you about how Yahshua healed all kinds of diseases. See, before we came into this gospel, before we came into this understanding, we had all kind of dis-ease <laughs> about our creator. We were diseased with not knowing who our creator is and how he really is. We had imagination, see? That's disease when it comes to your creator. And see, we were all diseased. And see, the Messiah, he went around healing all kinds of diseases, see? Read. Fourth verse. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. See, that, that water had to be moved, see? They call it troubling the water, see? That angel, that's that hand, that's that hand of Elohim doing the touching, see? See, Moses was touched by that hand when he was called up into the mount. See, and he saw, he, Yahweh showed him things that he didn't show the elders because the elders were not touched by that hand. Read. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity 38 years. When Yahshua saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Now, now listen, this man was ill for 38 years. You know, I can't stand a cold for a week. I done went out of my mind. See, this man was ill for 38 years. See, and the Messiah come and ask him, do you want to be made whole? Read. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the waters is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step is down before me. Yahshua said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. See, and he this man, he could never get to be first in the pool when the water was troubled. See, he and somebody would step in before him and take his healing or take his anointing. See, he needed a physical man to lift him and put him in the water first. See, but see, he done ran into the men of men. See, he has ran into the alpha male. See, he has ran into Yahweh Elohim through Yahshua the Messiah. See, that's who's healing him. See, not flesh and blood, but the Holy Spirit. It said, then what? Now, read the eighth verse. Eighth verse. Yahshua said unto him, rise, take up thy bed and walk. Read on. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked on the same day. And on the same day was the Sabbath. See, that's 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 the day we're all healed is the Sabbath. See that that spiritual Sabbath. That's the day that we are all healed. Our Sabbath comes, see, and we are made whole and we are able to rise up and walk. See, I remember uh, uh, Nathan Higgins asked me, how you doing, Lester? I said, oh, Doc, I'm, I'm hanging in there. He said, around here, we don't hang, we stand. Okay. 
I said, okay, okay, doc. And see, this man, he rose up, took up his bed immediately and walked. Okay, read on. 10th verse. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cur cured, it is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for them to carry thy bed. He answered them, he that made me whole, the same said unto me, take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, what man is that which said unto thee, take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed was, was not what it was, but Yahshua had conveyed himself away. A multitude being in that place. See, the man didn't know because Yahshua had split the scene. See, he was like, go. Okay. <laughs> Read on. 13. And he that was healed was not who it was. For Yahshua had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Yahshua founded him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Yahshua which had made him whole. See, Yahshua had to reveal to him who it was that healed to healed him. He, the man didn't know. See, it, it, read. And therefore did the Jews persecute Yahshua and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Okay, that's good right there. I, I don't I don't have time for that. Uh, the thing the thing I want to say is that when uh, the moderator was reading the aims, do you know those aims have been fulfilled and and those aims are continuing to be fulfilled? every day uh uh if 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 you could read the aims real quick starting at one but i want to concentrate on the last three but but start at one and read down aim number one to help you find and know yahweh our elohim as he really is and actually exists now it took it took Yahweh Elohim to come in and help us find and know him. See, it took him to do that. And, and, and that's, that's how we got down to this school. Uh, read number two. And number two, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Now, now, before we came in here, we, we looked at color and we looked at, at, at all of that. We all come from different walks of life and we all have different experiences. But Yahshua, the Messiah, he cleared all that up. We, we, don't, we don't look at color and nationality, sex and all that stuff. See, we're all one in Yahshua, the Messiah. Number three. Three to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. See, this is what we do. We, we, we read and we study and we investigate this thing. See, that's, that's been fulfilled. Read, number, keep reading. And number four, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. We do, we do all that around here. Number five. Fifth thing, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. See, we come in here with all kinds of, uh, of, of, of beliefs that we learned out in the world. And see, what Yahshua the Messiah did was pull all our superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Pull that up by the root. See, the root is the carnal mind. 
see? And he, he changed us, see? It's been fulfilled, read. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. See, as we come around, we are learning and knowing and understanding more more perfectly as we come around. We didn't know nothing about no ages and dispensations and how that uh, different things applied to different ages and dispensations. We didn't know nothing about that. See, being fulfilled. Uh, number seven. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. See, the things that used to uh, perplex us and get us bent out of shape, now we can look and see, oh, I know better than that. That's Satan, see, and we know to walk away. See, he, he don't come with a, a, a red suit and a and, and, uh, uh, Okay, I see it, five minutes. He don't come with a red suit and a pitchfork to where we can easily discern him. But through the Holy Spirit in us, we, we can discern that satanic spirit and, and, and walk away. See, be prudent about the matter. See, read on. Ninth, to make no, oh, excuse me, eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Okay, these, these were the three that I wanted to uh, uh, expound on, but we don't have time. But you can read these uh, Bible verses for yourself, see? And see, this is what we do. We are contending for the common salvation and faith, see? When Dr. Kinley had the vision and, and Yahweh asked him what was he to do with it, and he didn't know, then Yahweh had to tell him what he was to do with it. See, teach your people your will, Yahshua. See, well, this is what's happening with you and me. See, we earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith. See? This is what we do around here. Number nine. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. You know, you don't even dream about Jesus no more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, see, he has cut that out of us. See, Prior to coming into this school, I said it didn't make no difference. He's got many names. I was like everybody else. He's got many names. And, and whoever calls him by what name, we all going to meet up in him. That's the way I thought. See, number 10. 10th, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Listen, number 10 is the culmination of the previous nine. See, we inherit eternal life now. See, in this present moment, not, not uh, in the sweet by and by, like we've been taught. With those few words, I thank you for your time and your attention, all praises, honor, glory, majesty belong to our heavenly father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And thank you, Dr. Lester Embry. Now at this time, I'd like to cordially invite our visitors and friends to join us for our YouTube broadcast. Our classes are held on Zoom only on Tuesdays from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. And at the class building on Thursdays from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. and on Sunday from 11 a.m. to one o'clock p.m. 
All classes are streamed on YouTube. Participants, please remain muted until the host has ended our YouTube broadcast. Thank you. We will now end our class with the doxology taken from Jude, verses 24 and 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our savior through Yahshua, the Messiah, our sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let the class say, hallelujah. <laughs>